Welcome to this presentation as Theatre Museum Canada goes backstage, The Critic's Life. This program was recorded at the Elgin and Winter Garden Theatre Rehearsal Hall, Monday, March 27, 2006. The moderator, Jesse Wente, is joined by panelists Robert Cushman, Richard Azunian, and Lynn Slotkin. And here is the president of Theatre Museum Canada, Kate Barris. For those of you who don't know, I'm Kate Barris, president of the board of the Theatre Museum and I know that I speak for the rest of the board in saying how delighted we are to see all of you here. Just goes to show that if you give people what they want, they'll, they'll come, especially if it's free. <laughs> it's fitting that we should be focusing on uh, the drama critic tonight. As many of you may know, um, one of the key founders of the Theatre Museum is Herbert Whitaker, the drama critic emeritus of the Globe and Mail. Herb was the drama critic there from 1949 to 1975. And in his so-called retirement, he began championing the need for Canada's first theatre museum. His passion for this dream has fueled the legion of supporters who have uh, also wanted to come to see that, a re see that a reality, myself included. I became involved because Herb is one of my oldest friends, and I mean that in every possible way. I knew Herb before I was born. Um, <laughs> he and my father had adjoining desks at the Globe and Mail back in 1949, which is before I was born, um, and they became immediate friends. So from the time I could remember anything, Herb was there. He was always enthusiastic about theater, and he always enjoyed sharing that enthusiasm. And inevitably, I heard about his dream of creating uh, the Theater Museum. It was only a matter of time before I was on the board and just as dedicated as he was to making it happen. Today, over 20 years after Herb's campaign began, we have a collection. We have a record of exhibitions, six of them to date. We have a growing number of supporters, evidence. Um, we have a wonderful executive director and a dedicated board of people who are committed to preserving and interpreting our rich theatrical heritage as a celebration of past and present achievements and also as a way of inspiring greater theatrical achievement in the future. But we're still working on finding a home for all this to happen in, and Herb is 95. But there's lots that we can do until we get a proper home. One of the most exciting programs that we've initiated recently is the Legend Library, a series of videotaped interviews with theatrical legends, hosted by actor, director, and Theatre Museum board member, R.H. Thompson. To date, we've recorded the personal histories of such legends as Maver Moore, Douglas Campbell, Martha Henry, and as of last week, William Hutt. And I'm delighted to tell you that today we got word that R.H. has a date in London to record Michael Langham. This backstage th series is another program we're excited about, and so I guess I should turn my attention to it. We're thrilled to be able to uh, gather together such a talented panel of critics tonight. I have to warn you that one of the promises that we made before they would agree to come is that everyone had to leave their machetes at the door. <laughs> so if you're an actor or director thinking that this is your chance to get even for that bad review you got, tonight is, is not on the agenda tonight. What we are anticipating are lively and, and informative insights into the world of drama, the drama critic, as well as uh, views on the state of theatre today, and perhaps even a look at where we're going. Before I hand things over to our moderator, I have some people to thank, of course. First of all, we thank once again the Algon and Winter Garden, and, and Winter Garden Theatre Centre, Richard Mortimer and his staff. Not only did they agree to let us use this rehearsal hall and actually go backstage, uh, but they also allow us to store uh, some of our collection here, and they've hosted um, three of our exhibits. Thanks also to Balzac's at the distillery for donating the coffee, and Dufflet's for the, the cookies, Chairman Mills for the chairs, <laughs> <laughs> our volunteers, and <coughs> finally I'd like to publicly thank our fabulous executive director, Michael Wallace, who pulled all of this together. Um, it's been great to have him here, I'll tell you. And now it's time to turn things over to our moderator for the evening, a man who views film with a critical eye. Jesse Wente is a film critic for CBC Radio's Metro Morning and Here and Now, as well as for CBC TV and TVO. So we know our critics will be in good hands, and I'll hand them over to those good hands now. Jesse. Thank you. I'll bring this <clears throat> well, I'll stand at the beginning here. Um, thank you all, and I'd like to thank Kate and Mike for getting me out of the movie theater for at least 
one night. Uh, if I wasn't here, I think I'd be seeing Basic Instinct 2. So Where? Uh, yeah. Ex <laughs> there, uh, this is the life of the critic, though. I still have to see it tomorrow morning wow. anyway. Um, now, when I'm not in the movie theater or in my basement watching movies, part of, one of the things I do outside of that and why I have a foot in both sides of the camp here is I'm also uh, president of Native Earth Performing Arts, which is Canada's oldest uh, Aboriginal theater company and one of the, the theater companies here in Toronto. So I know what it is like to both be highly critical of someone's art in a very public manner, but I also know what it's like to uh, wake up in the morning and read a scathing review in the newspaper and the pain and everything that comes with it. Um, and I think here to help jo uh, to talk us through what it is to be a critic and our sort of role and everything, I'm joined by a very distinguished panel. Right here is uh, Lynn Slotkin, theater critic for CBC Radio's Here and Now and also author of The Essential Slotkin Letter, a monthly must read. Robert Cushman is theater critic, he's down at the end. Uh, for the National Post, author and six-time winner of the Nathan Cohen Award for Theater Criticism. And in the middle is Richard Azunian, theater critic for the Toronto Star, author and of course has worked in theater for more than 30 years. So please welcome everyone here tonight. <laughs> Nope, that's just the beginning. <laughs> and I think that's where we should start. Because, um, you know, not a lot of people really set out in life to be a critic professionally. So I'm wondering, I'll ask each of you, starting with Lynn, how you became a, a theater critic. Do I use this? Yes, please. Um, I went to university. I think that was, that was important for me. I went to York University. I studied history, theory, and criticism because I always wanted to be a theater critic. <laughs> I did. I never wanted to act. I, I couldn't act. I had no talent. I didn't want to be a, uh, a designer or a director. I always wanted to be a theater critic. I had enthusiasm for it. I wanted to pass it on. And I think that's what a theater critic does initially, essentially. Uh, so I studied at York. I started to write for the university newspaper. I had my first professional review published the year before I graduated, a couple of years ago. And I would eck out a living um, having, having my reviews published in publications that usually went out of business. And over the years, I, I had them published in more substantial newspapers. Um, I could never make a living out of it, only Richard can and <laughs> Robert. So I've always had a full-time job to augment the little salary I would make. Uh, I also uh, needed that, that full-time job so I could go to the theater, and I have to go to the theater. So I would go to London and New York and all of the other places that had theater, and I found along the way um, a friend uh, in the theater, an actress, asked me once to, to uh, I, I was told her I was going to go and see Hamlet in London, the Albert Finney Hamlet, and she said, tell me what you think, which was the beginning of my Slotkin letter. And over the years, it's developed into a monthly, uh, I write what I want, uh, within reason, of course. It goes to professionals. It's not just for the, for the, for the general population. And uh, it's not online. I want people to hold it in their hands like they would a play. And um, from that letter, it was recommended that when Richard got another job, Richard was one of the people who recommended that I um, try and replace him at here and now, you see. So I auditioned and I got the job five years ago. That's it. There you go. Richard. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> I came to theater criticism in kind of a roundabout way. Um, I grew up in New York City back in the 1950s when there were seven daily newspapers and they all reviewed the plays the morning after. And my dad worked in a little neighborhood bar and he did the night shift so he'd often come home with like the four morning papers and plunk them down. And early on I got to start reading the critics the next morning and would read, you know, that Mr. Kerr said this, Mr. Atkinson said this, Mr. Chapman said this, Mr. Coleman said this, et cetera, et cetera. I thought it was really interesting. Uh, I st started going to the theater because back in those days, too, a 